Okay, today I was to, again to talk about the H4 fins, the brand new ones, the Swiss made ones, there's got a bit of hype around them at present. But what I thought I'd do was to start off with the H2s, the original H of the H series. I've had uh, all H2s, H3s and H4s. So uh, I've always liked uh, their leading uh, technology. So this is the first fin, it was a polyurethane uh, mid and a aluminium uh, texaloom wrap on it. This was uh, designed by a couple of people, uh, architect, naval architect from Hobart in the Marine College and a guy called uh, Jeff German who comes from Talon Industries in Brookvale in New South Wales, Australia, who was a carbon fibre engineer, which, by the way, uh, this fin won an Australian Design Award in 2005, and uh, the Talon Industries has won quite a few awards, Australian Design Awards for various carbon fibre products. He was also working on an artificial heart with Dr. Chang. So what I found with this fin, what's unique, was these, the 14 degree angle compared to usually about 10 I think on most fins and the unique shape. I found the fin uh, turned very smooth long through the turns but I did find it lacked a little bit of drive uh, so I put in the Slater fin in the back and I found that uh, that solved my uh, issue. So but I can say the biggest wave I've ever caught in my life is with some H2s. Uh, it happened to be at the Maldives at, a, at, chick, at chickens and uh, it was quite large. And now for the H3s. The unique thing about the H3s over and standard fins for the day was the construction of the carbon fibre uh, wrapping had a distinct different pattern at halfway down through the base here and a different one at the top and also they had a unique very strong concave at the base and virtually none at the top so the concave gave you your turn and the stiffness and the straightness at the top gave you stability at speed tested by Richie Lovell who um, was a circuit surfer back in the day I loved the fin. I loved it as a, a H4, uh, as a quad, and also as a thruster. My son even put a quad set up in his new uh, cymatic and loved it until uh, he got some clipping reactors, uh, which is obviously a more modern fin. And now for the H4s. Okay. Now these are my favourites. Uh, I had a video on my cymatic and I said it was a board that did most waves, point and shoot, and a board that could do nearly any wave you want. And by the same token, the H4s are very similar. Still haven't had on a large wave, or like say a seven to eight foot type wave. Most of the waves have been three, four, possibly five, sometimes six, but the uh, fin has, what I like about it, it has control for the whole turn. It doesn't seem to have a spot for it asking you for what you want or has a resistance in a certain place. So a lot of fins will accelerate in the beginning of the turn then fade out and not have drive. And some fins will be hard to turn but will just sh slingshot once it gets moving. And another thing I was using on this board was this combination and the outside quads and the inside ones I was using this. And I found that combination fantastic on this board but what it did do was start to at high high speed on a point, local point break it tends to get a bit of um, uncertainty or insecure feel on the board and this fin doesn't have any of that. 
So let's have a closer look at the unique shape of these fins. The first thing you'll notice is the different angles here, which is actually a fraction thicker. This is on the outside of the fin. The insides don't have as many angles. I think they're more or less flat. But you have an angle here, so obviously this gives you the the forward area here is a, is thicker, so that gives you some sort of power off the base of the fin, I'd imagine in turns. And then you'll see this line going through here, and this gradient here is quite steep. So it's almost a straight line going through here. You can imagine the, the water rushing through this area of the fin to the point of that might be also creating a lower area here to help with the acceleration. As you can see this angle goes down through there and then the tip has its own angle there again. It has a slight chamfer on here and then you have the hatchet style tip. And on the rear of the fins you have another angle and another different material here. So you can imagine the flex pattern here the flex pattern through there and the flex pattern there are all different. Swiss engineering. But this is probably one reason why it has the ability to change character almost as it's performing on a wave. Then you go back to the rear fin and the rear fin is closer to the H2 in shape, that drag back section. And here's the same, we're starting in the front here with a, a thicker front here then you have a f more of a thinness through here and a th thinness through there and this also is thinner through there and there's a slight wrapping through this area here. So as you can see, although they, uh, um, they're very technical in their shape, you can imagine how hard that would be to manufacture something with this amount of angles. As you can see, these fins uh, are pretty unique and Tom Carroll uh, was one of the testers of the fin along with Mick Fanning and has still got involved with Talon Industries so they've been involved through the whole three. So this board and fin combination is a great uh, combination for 80% of your surfing. I haven't found the board wanting even as a groveler yet at all with this combination. I thought I'd just finish with a bit of a time travel. This was a board that was shaped by Mike Davis who year before last was inducted the National uh, Hall of Fame for Shapers with, along with Bob McTavish. So this board was my first board with a removable fin. So, and it has channels and flyers and you can almost say it as the original sci-fi or cymatic. Um, so I have come the full circle with boards. So thanks for watching. I thought, hope you find something interesting in that and you've got any questions, uh, just ask below.